In this video, I'm going to be showing you a new method that I've come up with to permanently disable the defective dedicated AMD GPU in a 2011 15-inch or 17-inch Apple MacBook Pro. Now the method that I'm about to show you here is by far the ultimate solution to this issue. And the reason I say that is because this method requires no hardware modifications, it does not rely on any NVRAM variables, and of course it is a permanent solution. And that solution is reprogramming the GMUX IC, which is a chip on the logic board of these machines that handles the graphics switching between the Intel integrated graphics and the dedicated AMD video card, and uh, reprogramming that chip with a custom firmware that I've developed. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show you the entire process of flashing that firmware onto the GMUX IC in this video and show you how well it actually works. So before we get started, I'm going to go ahead and uh, boot up this machine. Now this machine, of course, is a 2011 15 inch Apple MacBook Pro with a defective dedicated AMD GPU and uh, I am going to be using it uh, to demonstrate this process. So I'm going to go ahead and power it on and uh, show you what it currently does. Alright, so as you can see the screen looks somewhat normal but you might notice that there are quite a few uh, weird green lines on the screen and if we go ahead and take a really close look here you can see that the lines are jagged and they are making the picture look pretty much green at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, boot from this volume and uh, show you what it looks like. Now the graphics drivers in the OS have been removed so it will actually successfully complete the booting process as you can see. However, you can see there is no graphics acceleration and if there were graphics kits actually loaded for the AMD video card, the system would not boot at all and just hang on a white screen. So yeah, you can obviously see that there is something very wrong with the video card here. And uh, I, I should mention that the video card in these machines is known to be defective. It is not an issue with BGA soldering. It is not an issue with solder balls. It is physically impossible for the system to get hot enough to melt its solder under normal operating conditions. So it is not a soldering issue, but rather an issue of the manufacturing process of the AMD Radeon X or the Radeon HD 6000 series video cards that are used in these machines. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and shut the system down and uh, I'm going to go ahead and take the bottom cover off the system, which is actually all that you need to do uh, to uh, per uh, actually flash the GMUX IC, you do not need to remove the motherboard from the system at all. So I'm going to go ahead and take the bottom cover off the system and uh, begin the process of soldering the JTAG wires that we'll be needing, that we'll be using to flash the GMUX IC. So I'm going to go ahead and resume the video. Alright, so as you can see here, I've gone ahead and removed the back of the machine. And uh, as you can see here, I've gone ahead and soldered on a few wires uh, to the JTAG header on the logic board. Now on the pinout for those is uh, available in the schematic diagram for the board. And uh, as you can see here, uh, the connector is J9600 and it has three, or it has five main pins that need to be connected. Uh, the PP3V3SO, which is of course 3.3 volts, JTAG GMUX TDO, TDI, TMS, and JTAG ISP TCK. And uh, obviously on the board view here, you can see the connector right there. Now, if this was like a uh, early revision board or a testing board, um, this connector would actually be populated. Uh, but in the case of a production board or a late revision board, um, that connector is not present on the board. Um, so in this case, I've gone ahead and soldered wires to it. Now those wires I have connected to a breakout cable right here. And as you can see, you've got um, all the pin labels on there, TDI, TDO, ground, and so on. Um, and that is connected over here to a Lattice JTAG ISP programmer. As you can see here, it is model HW USB N 2A, and it's just the standard Lattice uh, FPGA programmer. Um, so now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to start the process of flashing the GMUX IC. So in order to do that, the first thing we need to do is, of course, ensure everything is connected. As you can see, I've got the machine all connected to the programmer there, and the programmer is connected to the computer via USB. 
Um, and we've got on this machine right here, the Lattice uh, development software right here, which I'll be using to program the chip. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, open it actually right here. So we can actually watch the screen as we do this process. Uh, so as you can see here, the display is kind of just open on the ground here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is plug the board in because it is very important that the board has power uh, before you start the flashing process. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug the board in, make sure it turns on. And we wanna get it to a point where it's booted up and is in the system firmware. All right, so as you can see, it is in the system firmware. You can see those green lines are still present on the display, indicating it is currently using the dedicated video card. Um, so now what we're gonna go ahead and do is verify that the power LED on the programmer has turned green, which as you can see it has. Verify our connections right here, make sure everything looks good. And it does, as you can see right there. So now we're gonna go ahead and begin the programming process. So, go ahead over to the software here and select program. So as you can see here, it says programming XCF. And in a minute here, we should see the display turn off. And then in theory, it should turn on with the dedicated graphics disabled. As you can see, the display is now off. The machine is still running at this point. You can see the programming is still happening. The programming is finished and the machine is still off. So now we need to go ahead and reboot the system. And once we do that, it should show a video signal on the display. All right, so once the system boots, it should show a video signal. And look at that, it is showing video. And look at that, no more green lines on the display. So I'll go ahead and let it sit here till the flashing question mark appears as I have disconnected the SSD. And uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at that and make sure that looks good. And there it is. So we'll go ahead and take a close look at it here. It looks nice and crisp, no green lines, which means we are now running off the integrated Intel HD graphics GPU. So now that we've done that, the process is complete and we can go ahead and reassemble the system. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get the bottom case on the system and uh, then we will go ahead and boot the system into an operating system and uh, see how it looks there. So I'll go ahead and resume the video. All right, so as you can see here, I have gotten the JTAG wires desoldered from the connector. Um, as you can see, the pads are right there and there are no more wires connected. Uh, of course, I've got them right there. Um, also, the GMUX IC, as you can see, is also unmodified in any way. And there are no bodge wires on the board at all. It is a completely stock hardware configuration. So now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and put the bottom case on the machine flip it over and we'll go ahead and boot the system up. All right, as you can see, the screen looks perfectly clear. No green lines on it at all. And as you can see, we're now in the boot selector and the icon right there does not have any distortion whatsoever. And that is of course an indication that we are now running off the Intel integrated graphics. So let's just go ahead and boot into OS X. All right, so as you can see, we have full graphics acceleration we have a, tr a translucent dock, as you can see, a translucent menu bar. Um, so let's just go ahead into about this Mac. So as you can see here, it identifies the system as a 15-inch early 2011 MacBook Pro. 
Of course, this model has a 2 GHz Intel Core i7, and of course, we are running off the Intel HD Graphics 3000 integrated graphics card. So, let's go ahead into System Report, and we'll take a look at graphics and displays. As you can see here, there is no AMD video card detected whatsoever, and the system is only utilizing the Intel HD graphics. So, that has been a successful repair. We have now flashed the GMUX IC with my custom GMUX firmware and have completely and permanently disabled the graphics switching functionality and of course that is disabling the defective dedicated AMD GPU. Now um, of course this is permanent as I've mentioned. Um, you can reset the PRAM as many times as you want and it will have no effect on the system at all. And of course installing system updates will cause no issues whatsoever as well. So that has been the successful repair and custom GMUX IC firmware flash on this 15 inch early 2011 Apple MacBook Pro. So hope you enjoyed this video.